Hello everyone, my name is Kate. Today I have a really exciting project for you guys. Have you ever thought about how art and science might be similar? Today we're going to explore the relationship between art and science. Both things help us understand and interpret the world around us. Science is often about fact-finding and gathering knowledge and experimenting, while art is often about sharing and communicating a message, or it's used as self-expression. Artists and scientists are both very creative and inventive. They are often people pushing the boundaries and making discoveries. Today we're going to look at how magnets work and how we can use them to make art. Magnets use invisible magnetic forces to pull certain metals towards themselves. Magnets can even work over a distance. They don't even have to be touching. I'm sure you have a magnet or two on your fridge, so you know that when you stick it there, it will stay. If you reverse the magnet and try to stick it to the fridge, it's gonna fall. That's because magnets have a north and a south pole. The north and south poles pull each other together, while the matching poles will push each other away. So, how could we use this invisible magnetic force to create art. First, we're gonna need a few materials. So, for this project, we will need a few supplies. We're going to need our three primary colors and acrylic paint. We'll need five round sheets of watercolor paper, two wooden rounds with the magnets attached to the back. We'll also need a pair of safety scissors, three tart trays, some tape, a magnet, some paper clips, a pencil, a glue stick, and finally our color wheel. So now that we know what we need, let's get started. The first thing we're going to do is grab a tart tray and one of our watercolor rounds, or watercolor paper rounds, and we're going to put that in our tray. We're just going to secure the sides a little tiny bit with some scotch tape. So just the very edges on both sides, and that's just so our magnet doesn't move the paper. Both sides. Okay, and next, I put out my three primary colors and I'm going to choose one to start with. So I'm gonna start with yellow and I'm just gonna water it down quite a bit. And you might have to test it and then water it down again, but that's okay. Now I'm gonna grab a paper clip. I'm gonna to toss it in my paint. I'm just gonna go ahead and use my fingers because they're gonna get messy anyways. and I'm going to drop it into my tray. Next, we'll take our magnet and we're gonna take it on the bottom of our tray. And then we're just going to gently move our paper clip. And now there's no more paint coming off, so I'm gonna grab it and dump it into the paint again. Okay, so. Next, I'm gonna grab my color wheel and decide what color I'm gonna use next. I think I want to do some orange. I want to see some pops of orange in my magnet painting. So that means that I'm going to have to add red because red and yellow primary colors combine to create orange, one of our secondary colors. I'm going to rinse my brush and then add water to my red. Okay, so now that I've watered down my red paint, I'm gonna grab another paper clip and toss it in there. And then I'm just gonna repeat the exact same process that I did for the yellow. And I think I'm gonna do yellow one more time. We have lots of nice red. I want to see more orange. So 
So now we have one magnet painting. You can see our little pops of orange in there. We're gonna set this aside and let it dry. And then we're going to repeat with our next heart tray. And you can decide which colors you'd like to use using your color wheel. Okay, so I finished all of my rounds and I removed them from their tart trays. So this was the one that we did together with the yellow and the red and we know that it creates orange and you can see those little pops all throughout. So next, I wanted to create some purple and I know to do that I'm going to need to use red and blue. So I did that here on this one. I started with my red and then I brought in my blue and you can see little pops of purple throughout. Next, I wanted to do our remaining primary colors. So we already used our reds and blues, our reds and yellows. So now we have blue and yellow left. So that was this one. I started with my yellow, added some blue and I have beautiful pops of green. Next, I decided to do all three primary colors. So on our color wheel, it doesn't actually show us what we're going to get if we combine all three. So I wanted to test that out. So you can see I have my yellow, my reds, my blues, and it might be hard to tell on camera, but hopefully if you do this one yourself, you'll be able to see. We have some browns in here even a little bit over here. So if we combine all three of our primary colors, we get a nice brown. Do you know what else will make brown? Our complementary colors. So that means the colors sitting across from each other on the color wheel. We know that blue and orange are complementary colors. They combine to create brown. We also know that yellow and purple our complementary colors. So the same thing applies. If we combine them, we're going to get brown. So you can actually make a lot of different browns from your color wheel. It's a fun activity to try sometime. And then for my last one, I wanted to see what would happen if I combined two secondary colors. So I decided to choose green and purple. So green and purple are here on the color wheel. Between them, we have our primary blue. So. I started with my green and I added some purple. Now my purple's a little bit dark, so it did get a little bit muddy in here, but you can actually see some pops of blue, really deep blue. So that's kind of interesting. We usually think that we mix our primary colors together to get a color. And we kind of think that you can't mix a primary color, but if you have the right secondary colors, you can actually combine them to get back to your primary color, and that's because they cancel out and you'll get what's left in the middle. Okay, so let's move on to making our magnets. Okay, so to finish our project, we're going to grab one of our favorite paintings, one of our wooden rounds with the magnet on the back, We'll also need our glue stick, a pencil, and some safety scissors. So first, we're going to lay our painting face up, and we'll take our wooden round face down, so the magnet's facing up. We're gonna place it right on top. Then we'll take our pencil and do a little outline. and we'll remove it when we have this nice little guide. So then we'll grab our safety scissors. Now you can have a parent help you here. And if you are doing this yourself, be very careful. All right, so now our painting fits very nicely on top of our wooden round. We're gonna go ahead and flip our painting over, wooden round face up, and we'll grab our glue stick. And then we're just gonna very generously 
glue both the wooden round and the back of your painting just to make sure that it really sticks. And then I'm going to carefully place it on top, trying to line it up as best as we can. And you can just press firmly. And there you have it. A nice, here's my very favorite finished magnet. I hope you enjoyed this project and learning about magnets and color.